Hello? Hello. Okay, so you know this thing. So 16 seconds in. Hey, it made it at 16 seconds. Does that mean they got cleared? <sighs> President did this thing the other night. We had an executive order where he swapped out a judge position and pointed it to another position. Well, I'm looking right now at a congressional record for 10 days ago, and I have a theory of something that's been happening. They have these acting pro tems. Not every day is uh, the same pro tem. There's something about junior senators get to be the acting senator pro tem. Do they do some sort of transfer overnight of actings? And when they do a transfer of the actings, is there some sort of transmittal? And is that transmittal supposed to be for members of the Senate and or members of Congress? Then why every fucking night for how many years do I have monologues with myself, extended monologues about policy that oftentimes can be tracked the next day in public notices, but then also often tears to things that are happening in terms of public policy? Why is a woman that nobody's responded to in five years and who was homeless on the street being electronically tortured for three able to be on currents connected to Senate's transmissions or transmittals associated with a transfer of command in the office of the pro tem? If that's the case, is that what's happening? Is that why you keep saying they have to cede? Somebody should have ceded to you? So the acting from one day cedes, so the next day the acting that is permitted to step up is able to resume that position and did you just at some point stop appointing daily actings is the same acting in the position of being acting since october when there was a specific acknowledgement that that person was going to be put into the position of the acting and that also happened to correlate with the president's visit down here to Texas that I've been tracking, connected to the uh, 144 with the 0. 0.6 that keeps failing over and over again. December 19, 2020. The top of the page here, this particular page. Mr. Cornyn speaks about the coronavirus, says all kinds of crap about Texas. It would be different if he hadn't done the same thing following Hurricane Harvey with the 6.1 gigahertz. Yeah, right? You didn't get that at the time, did you? But you hedged on it, didn't you? But the best part is the end here. I've been to page 15 of 51. I've gotten now five different, at least five different instances of major votes where somebody requests a waiver of the mandate to call to, to call quorum. What were you guys doing on December 19th that you strategically decided to waive quorum? Over and over again. It says the same thing over and over again. At the, at the bottom here, right here, it says this. It says this right here. Where's this at? Call the roll. The clerk will call the roll. Where's the next one here? What's it say? Hmm? Uh, Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the mandatory quorum call be waived. Without objection, it is so ordered. Why did nobody object to a consistent serial waiver of quorum? Did they lack quorum on the 19th? How many days have you guys been passing bills where you lack quorum? Are you allowing proxies to vote in the stead of actual members of Congress as I in, in the Senate, as I suspect you have been allowing to have happen since July of 2019? What's going on in page 15 here? This is what it says. This is the direct quote from uh, December 19. Senator, uh, Senator, uh, Leahy. There is a concern about what might be in the omnibus bill and in the COVID bill and here on a Saturday and tomorrow, Sunday or whatever, we are finished and we are rushing it through. I would remind everyone that we were ready to bring up the appropriations bills that make up the omnibus in July. The House of Representatives had sent over in June, it sent over their COVID bill. 
We could have bought it up then. We could have started having a series of votes. It might have taken us two or three weeks to have votes every day on different parts of their proposal. Democrats' proposals, Republicans' proposals, the appropriations' proposals, and vote them up or down. I had urged that. Then he goes on to say, Ah, but there was a reason. We would have had to take two or three weeks to vote all of this up or down, but we had to take instead the time to put through lifetime judgeships of people who have been recommended by special interest groups. That is beneath the U.S. Senate. Well, it also might be a way to offset something related to the pension system with all the people that were allowed to be illegally terminated from their executive positions. How many open judgeships are there still in existence right now? What's the turnover been on the bench? Is it inappropriate and outside of procedure for the Senate to be voting on judgeships at this level? Because I've seen a lot. I've also seen a lot of procedure about appointments to military positions, including military positions in new commands that don't last very long. Are you using actual appointments as securitizable moments? And what ends up actually happening with the appropriations process? He seems very upset here. How many days did the Senate waive quorum and expect to be allowed to function as if it was doing business that it was constitutionally empowered to do? You're not allowed to vote outside a quorum on an appropriations bill. You have to have quorum for an appropriations bill. As a matter of fact, here in the state of Texas, you can arrest people and require them to participate in a vote if you need to. Can you do something comparable on the federal level? Why don't you guys just resign? <laughs> 